Parker. Okay, greetings YouTube. This is uh, Hillbilly Hierophant, Light Wolf Shamanic Healing. Call me Light Wolf. Um, anyway, I was told by God, he spoke to me, as I told you last time on the first episode, he told me to announce that I am a prophet with his word. And I was talking to God on the way home, and I got a word from God, and he said, go home and do some art. I said, Because what I do is I say, Lord, what would you have me do today? Because in a lot of cases, there's like levels, right? There's, there's a level where you're at when you're not a believer or an atheist, like I used to be for 30 years of my life. And you're like, well, there's no God. There's no magic, but through the power of my own will and determination, I can get things done and I can make things happen in my life for the better. And then there's a level above that where you say, uh, like what happened to me in 2007 when I experienced the movie The Secret and then my life changed for the better, where you say, oh, okay, well, maybe this religion and the teachings of Jesus and all this stuff are just good stories to people to learn from, but none of it ever actually happened. But there is, uh, there is supernatural forces in the universe, and it's only supernatural because science can't measure it and duplicate it. And then you have an incident a layer that that of understanding that happens like what happened to me in 2013 when I was down on my luck you know I was in a nice apartment in um what was it Tigard no it wasn't Tigard I don't remember where it was but it was outside of Wilsonville it might have been Tigard in Oregon and I was living in an apartment and I just moved to town uh uh what was it September, September, no, August of 2012. So I'd been there about six months or whatever, and I was working, um, had a job, lost that job. They said I wasn't, I wasn't a fit, but they hired me because I was a fit. So anyway, there's a whole confusion about that there. Um, but basically, I think it... Um, breaks down to hiring managers are double dipping or at least were during that time. Hiring multiple candidates, not letting them know it's a competition and then firing whoever did the worst and hiring whoever did the best, even if they were close or whatever. So, but leave that aside. So what happened in 2013 was in uh, in early 2012, I had been working at not early, late 2012, I've been working at Xerox. And I was on contract as a Pearl developer for two months. The guy that was my trainer, he was a great guy, but he decided to jump ship and took a better offer and more power to him. But before he left, I was supposed to be trained for six months and it had only been two months. So he tried to shove six months worth of training into a week of what he called brain dump. And bless his heart, he did the best he could, but it wasn't enough to get me up to his level or the level that I would have been at in in six weeks, six months, sorry. But um, so <laughs> around the same time, there was uh, a massive shakeup in the organization. There was a uh, what they call restructuring, which usually involves layoffs. And I was one of the casualties of the layoffs. And this was the very first job I was ever at where they wouldn't give me a recommendation letter. They said it was against policy. My hiring manager said it was against policy. And every contract I've had with any company since then have always said the same thing. So something happened between 2011 and 2013 where everybody seemed to get some kind of memo that said don't give anybody... Uh, uh, paper recommendations. So that's interesting. That's something to look into. I might discuss that in the future because not only is this a spiritual channel, <laughs> if you're saying that blur, that's, that's Bella. Bella the blur. She's, she's such a good kitty. Yeah, she's daddy's good kitty. 
You know. And um, anyway, and we'll talk about cats from time to time too. But not only a spiritual channel, but also how to live spiritually with spiritual guidance in the world. Right? We can't sequest ourselves to the mountains now. We can't go hide out for 20 years and meditate. We have, we're here to be spiritual lights in the world. And, and let me tell you, it's rough sometimes. <laughs> but then you got cats. So, <laughs> anyway... I guess, oh, I was talking about the levels. So in 2013, needless to say, I was a highly qualified web developer. Uh, I'll say high level junior web developer. But I couldn't get a job to save my life. I had interviews and there was always something going on. You know, I interviewed with Nike and the hiring manager went to China for a month after the interview, so I didn't hear back anything for a month and a half. Weird stuff like that. Out of the ordinary. <clears throat> anyway, and then it was like March of 2013, I think, February or March of 2013, I had um, kidney stone, first time in my life. And let me tell you, if you've never had kidney stone, it was excruciating pain. Okay, turn this back, mouse. Okay, good. It was excruciating pain and un unbearable. It felt like somebody was cutting me open from the inside out. And let me just tell you, I'm gonna spin this for a minute, so I apologize if you hope you don't get dizzy. Tighten this up a little. Okay, and we're back. Hopefully, she won't be able to move that so much. Anyway, yeah. So, 2013, I had kidney stone. And I, I remember raising my hands to the sky and saying, No, no, that wasn't this. I'm, I'm jumping ahead too far. With the kidney stone, I, I went online, I looked, I was, and the pain just kept growing and growing. And what I found was, when I sat in the tub, it didn't help. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't have problems peeing or anything, so I didn't understand what the deal was. Um, oh my God, this was such a crazy experience too. Because when I, I called the 911 ambulance came, got me, they took me to the nearest hospital. When I got to the hospital, there was a, a security guard there that kept wanting to taser me because I was screaming because I was in so much pain. It's like they wouldn't wouldn't accept that I I was in that much pain or something. Finally, after two hours, they came out and gave me some drugs or something. And I didn't want drugs. I wanted to know what was wrong and what the solution was. And then they got a real doctor to come look at me. And that doctor told me that it was, you know, kidney stones. And I needed to take medication, uh, pain meds for, I think it was Oxycontin actually, for, I don't know, a week or two. And then we'd have to schedule surgery. And not knowing what else to do, I was like, uh, I don't like the idea of either of those two, but I don't know what else to do at this point. So I just kind of agreed that we do that, go on that path. And then when I got home, um, I couldn't even get home, right? I mean, I had to have my brother come pick me up because I didn't have a vehicle there. The ambulance had brought me. And I was still in pain. I was just drugged up so much I couldn't feel it. And uh, I was on oxycodone for three days straight at my brother's house. Waking up, taking pain meds, going to sleep. I don't remember eating anything or nothing. And I remember on the third day, I was like, I can't go on like this. And so I went online. I was looking for resources and I couldn't find anything. I was very surprised I couldn't find a natural solution to get rid of kidney stones. So I called a naturopath in Florida named uh, uh, Dr. Morse, great guy. He, uh, he He's a great guy. I recommend him highly to anybody who's looking for help 
um, and has money. I didn't have money at the time, and he did have a free program. So, and he knew, you know, I didn't realize it then either, but it was God that told me to go see him um, about a year earlier about my hemorrhoids issue. And, and we might talk about that at another time. I'm not trying to have that be the focus of this channel, but that's something that I deal with on a daily basis. So it will come up from time to time. So excuse me if, if you're uh, queasy about listening to stuff about bodily functions. You know, God did make us, and we do have things that we have to go through to understand life. But moving on, I called him up, and I don't think I talked to him, but I talked to one of his uh, receptionists who also... You know, the, they have their receptionists there trained in the in the skills. And uh, the place is called, it used to be called God's Herbs, but I think it's called Nature's Botanical Pharmacy now. And, uh, and let me tell you what, this guy, I don't remember his name, I apologize. It was like Adam or something like that. And, and he... He gave me the solution. He said, let me check real quick. He went and checked, came back. He said, all right, you need to take magnesium and you need to take vitamin B6. So I went to the pharmacy next door, bought magnesium and B6, and, and he was saying take one uh, the first hour and then alternate. So like if it was uh, 10 a.m., so take the magnesium at 10 a.m., then take another magnesium uh at noon, so we're going to go two hours on magnesium, and then we're going to take the uh, the B six every every other hour. So it'd be ten a.m., eleven a.m., twelve a.m., one a.m. I mean one p.m. etc. And it was so miraculous, and I was in so much pain, I couldn't believe it. I took it for one hour. I mean, I took one magnesium and one B six an hour apart, like he had, he had said, and I passed the stone. I couldn't believe it. I was going to have to pay $10,000 or something just for them to go in and cut me up when I didn't want surgery at all. And God just, Holy Spirit just touched my heart. And I wasn't even a Christian at the time. But the Holy Spirit touched my heart and said, call him. And I called him, you know, and I called him the wizard because he had much more insight into the human body than any doctor I'd ever met. Uh, Dr. Morris, that is, a naturopath. And I called him and I wasn't able to talk to him and that was disappointing. But the person who was there didn't have the answer, but they were able to know where to go and get the answer. And they brought that back to me so quickly didn't charge me for the answer, and it was such a blessing. Let me tell you, I should have sent a thank you note, and I think I may have sent an email or something, because it was so. It was such a relief. I mean, I, I was healed. I was healed of my kidney stone. It passed. I saw it in the toilet. I dug it out and kept it as a souvenir in a box for a while to remind myself of what I went through. It was so tiny, but so devastating. So devastating. So um, I had experienced that in 2013. Then I ended up waking up one morning. Still didn't have a job. Still was struggling to get em employment. Was wondering how I was going to pay my bills. I woke up one morning and I had been researching Edgar Casey, And somehow it was on the 700 Club CBN Christian channel. I had cable at the time. And at the time, I was considering myself a left, left wing, um, you know, uh, uh, um, a liberal. I considered myself a liberal who was all about freedom for the people and keeping the, the nasty Republicans and their religion from preventing people from doing what, what they want to do and live in their life. And while it's true that a lot of uh, seers and prophets sent by God were murdered in the time that's called the burning times 
because they were identified and, and accused of being witches instead of what they were, uh, t- um, tools, representatives of God uh, by the, the political elite who were also involved in the church at the time. While that's true, um, what I've come to find in the, in the interim is that that's only part of the truth. So, so back to 2013. So I had these major events happen. I had the kidney stone. And then I woke up one morning and it was uh, Andrew Womack. And he was on, and he did this prophesying. No, it wasn't prophesying, but he was talking about biblical prophecy and how he believed in prophecy and how God had spoken to him before and saved his life and told him not to get on an airplane or whatever. And he was going to a Christian conference, you know, that was supposed to help Christians and, you know, and speak to people in the word and whatever. And he was doing God's work in that. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him not to get on the plane. And so he had to wrestle with, well, is this the devil telling me this? And he knew it was the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, but this is going to help so many people. But God told him no. And said, don't get on that plane. Now we have free choice. We have free will. And God has given us the capability to make our own decisions. So it was so powerful to hear Andrew Womack say this. And, and let me tell you, I remember it vividly. I woke up and I had fallen asleep with the TV on and I thought I was watching YouTube and it might have not been a Christian TV channel. It might have been YouTube was just playing on, 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 you know, YouTube, the algorithm says, oh, you like this kind of stuff? And then it cues something up next automatically. It might have been that that's what was going on. Because I remember, like I said, I was going to, uh, I fell asleep that night uh, earlier, or the na- night before, I fell asleep watching uh, Edgar Casey stuff about what Edgar Casey had to say about Jesus and his life and stuff, you know, that illuminated parts that are missing from the Bible and, and stuff. And, uh, and yes, I recognize I'm saying it and stuff. This is Oliver. He's Bella's brother. Um, anyway, where was I at? Sometimes I lose track. Lord, bring me back. Yes, Andrew Womack. So I woke up and he was talking about how spirit spoke to him and that saved him from getting on a plane and getting killed because the plane ended up crashing. And I was like, something about it, something about it just struck me. And I started breaking down crying. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. And I remember... He kept flashing a number on the screen and said, you know, if you want to get our, he's kind of Texas Southern accent, whatever it is. Like, if you want to get our uh, free materials on how you can change your life with Jesus and, and learn about Bible prophecy and what the Bible really has to say, uh, you know, give us a call. So I gave him a call because I felt like I was being moved to do that, even though, like I say, I wasn't a Christian at the time in any kind of meaningful way. And uh, what I mean by that is when I was a kid, when I was like between 8 and 10, my mom would send me to church uh, because the born-again Christians came and said, hey, we'll give you a, a day of peace from your son. He'll get to have fun and, and do some learning and be with other kids, and we'll give him a candy bar for coming. So it was kind of like a big bribe. Otherwise, we probably would have never gone to church. We weren't church people. Um and so that's how I got exposed to the teachings of the church for the most part when I was younger. Um, and I had been baptized and I had been saved and I had gone to multiple churches for the candy bars. So I had been saved multiple times. Now, if I look back now, I would say mm, that that probably wasn't the best Thing to do, but that was the way it had to be. That was the only way they they were going to get through to me at all. And what they did was they planted a seed, 
And, you know, then you heard about Jim Baker and all these fake preachers that were sleeping with people and being tempted and, and having prostitutes on the side and all this stuff. And that kind of gave God a bad, bad name, a bad taste in my mouth. So, so I was a practicing atheist, I would say, because I kept looking for evidence of God. And all I was able to do was prove that God didn't exist. So like I said, fast forward, you know, from age 10 to 2013. And here I am, a staunch atheist. I don't say a staunch atheist. Um, I was an open-minded atheist, but nobody had showed me enough proof that the Bible or Jesus was real or anything like that. And I was starting to think that Jesus might be real because of Edgar Cayce's teachings, who, interestingly enough, Christians, uh, a lot of Christians, uh, condemn as, you know, New Age teachings or whatever that we shouldn't listen to. But it was Edgar Cayce that led me back to Jesus. Think about that. So, interesting. So I called the number, and I remember I was just crying. I just broke down crying. I didn't understand it. And there was a nice lady on the end of the line. And she said, you know, it's $36 for the material. And I was like, oh, I, I, don't, have any, I don't have any kind of funds. And she said, that's not a problem. I said, you know, we've, we've got it set up so that we'll send you the books for free. And uh, all we ask is that, you know, if you do have some money someday that, that you can chip in to help us out, um, we'd sure appreciate it. At the time, they were trying to build a college in Colorado called Karis Bible College. And I've seen it, and it's a beautiful... Uh, I've seen the interior because they built it, <laughs> and it's beautiful. And uh, I've seen it on YouTube. That's what I'm trying to say. So, and I really wanted to help, but like I said, I, I didn't have any money. So, so that was such an amazing day. And in fact, that was the day that the Lord spoke to me and said, every time you speak with a representative on the phone, whether you think they helped you sufficiently or not, you need to thank them for their time and patience. And... And it was interesting because I still didn't acknowledge that it was the Lord at work, right? Um, but I knew that it was a voice that I should trust. I felt in my heart that it was a voice of good, and I knew I wasn't crazy. And you know, we'll go into it at, you know, on some on another video, but um, I had been hearing. You've been hearing a voice call me the same way Moses was called. And I just figured it was some kind of psyop uh, from the government. You know, maybe they had a list of everybody who was talented and gifted as children and were targeting them because they figured out what the binaural brainwave uh, frequency was that made these kids special also known as indigos and crystals and stuff like that. But like I say, that's, that's a story for another time. And that's what I thought. I thought that was more likely, that was more Occam's razory than, you know, God is talking to me. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Okay. A lot of stuff happened in 2013 for me. And it all happened in the... In the, in the sequence of about three months. And I remember I remember that was the first time I did that. I said, you know, thank you for so much for your time and patience today. Is there anything I can do? That's what God told me to say. Is there anything I can do to repay your kindness before I let you go? And I was afraid to say it at first. I was like, that's kind of crazy because if you say that to some people, they might say something ridiculous like, well, yeah, you could give me $100. But 
But you know what? I've been saying that to people who were kind to me on the phone and who didn't seem kind to me on the phone, who seemed like they were having a bad day and who seemed very pleasant for seven years. And nobody once has asked me for money. Nobody once has asked me for something ridiculous. The only thing they've ever asked for uh, is that would benefit them is like a good recommendation when I get a survey. And I always give a hundred percent recommendation when it when it was a good when it was a good job. And, and for the most part, it usually is. And one of the things that I hear the most I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I feel like Holy Spirit is touching my heart right now. Because I used to be a customer service representative. I started my career in customer service and uh, telephone sales, otherwise known as telemarketing. So I know what it's like to be on the front lines of a call center and to have the, the pressure to make your AW, AW whatever they called it, uh, your metrics or whatever. And I know the people I spoke to, some of, them, some of them said, you changed my day. You really made my day better. And some of them didn't even have to say that. They just said, I, you, could, you could hear it in their voice. You could hear they were downtrodden. They had been beaten up by life. And, and, and me just speaking those words that God told me to. You can hear their voice brighten up. You can hear... <laughs> you can hear a smile on their face. You can hear it. And I know something, something as simple as that is changing people's lives. For the better, and I know I know that God is working through me. Even though I'm still a sinner, I'm not perfect. You know, I'll never be perfect until I reunite with God in heaven. And uh, that's something we can talk about at some time. But the goal while we're here on earth is to get as close to perfect as close to pure love for everybody and everything as we can, as close to compassion and understanding for everybody and everything. You see, when people strike out, when people are angry, when people treat you unkindly, when people attack you, usually it's not because they're pure evil. Usually, and when I say usually, I mean like 99% of the time. It's because they are hurting. They are hurting. We look at what's going on in the world right now. We look at, you know, the Antifa and the BLM, and, you know, who that I think the BLM probably started out of good intentions. And maybe Antifa did too. Even the one uh, that was started supposedly in opposition to Hitler may have started in, in good intentions as well. Just like the mafia and all kinds of other secret organizations, uh, militias and, and stuff. But what ends up happening when you don't have clear leadership and don't understand that God does not undertake, God does not want violence in any circumstances against humans. God doesn't want violence against animals or rocks or trees, but especially against humans. Why? Because we are here to be representatives of God. Spirit, show me what you show me what you're telling me right now. Okay, this is going to be crazy, and I know I'm. It feels like I've gone off on all these different tangents, but you know, God is moving through me in this way for a reason. He's showing me that part of what we're here for is to be a representative of God when aliens in spaceships come 
thousand years from now. Now, I'm not one of them who believes aliens have never visited the Earth. You know, I'm kind of on the Van Dank and uh, Ancient Aliens program where I know in my heart that aliens have visited us and are still are with us right now and only known to certain people. I don't know who that is. I don't know the, the full truth of it, but that much is true to me. That much is true to me. And you can look at this video and you can say, oh, he's just a crazy Christian. But I want you to understand, I'm still a scientist. I'm still analytical. I'm still a skeptic. So you can call me a Christian mystic skeptic, maybe. I don't know. It's an interesting combination because often when people convert, they fall for the manipulation of those who would manipulate the church because they don't have the understanding of Jesus's shedding his blood and what that did and how that changed and washed away uh, the sacrifices and stuff that were required in the early part of the, the, the you know in the Old Testament. But this isn't a, this isn't a, you know a lesson on the Bible right now. We can do that later in a different video. But um, somebody out there needed to see that. Somebody out there needed to see me talking relatively lucidly and then break down and cry. Somebody needed to see that. So I honor that that's what God needed me here for at this point, at this time. But let's get back to the 2013. So I broke down and cried. Kind of like what you just saw. And the person I was speaking to, the representative, she was so kind and so polite the whole time. And when I said that to her at the end, she almost broke down and cried. And it was just... <laughs> I'm getting for Clint, as Mike Myers used to say. Um, okay, so let's move on. So I got the materials and I read them. And it just grew even more powerful in me. I was like, okay, well, even if God, you know, God's probably